uh, is uh, uh, very interesting in law and uh, especially uh, uh, Europe uh, law and politics, economics and uh, public um, money management. So uh, I will stop my uh, stop sharing my screen now. And please um, share your screen. Okay. Start your lecture. And I know uh, we couldn't take uh, some break, but uh, uh, the first day is very rich in many important lectures, and I won't I don't want to skip any uh, uh, any uh, lecture. So uh, after Dr. Berman, we can take uh, uh, five minutes. Then uh, we will. Uh, complete uh, the last uh, 30 minutes of our first day. Okay, I need to just arranging it a little bit, so. Okay, is it fine now? No, but uh, it's not slideshow, so you can yeah. start. From... Okay. But if I make slideshow, then I cannot see my screen, like it's enlarging it too much. So I think this way will be fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's, in fact, it, I don't know what's happened, but okay. I think now it, it, it could be fine, I think now. But if you, didn't, uh, if you didn't enlarge your screen, the, the, the audience will not uh, hear the, uh, see the slides in, in perfect way. Okay, so it's better now. Yeah, it's better, but I will not, okay, just I will, yeah, would I just, okay, okay, good. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for staying with us for this one session. And I will try to keep it as short as possible because of time as well as because of the audiences and because of people. So what, what I will discuss would be about science diplomacy in the Middle East and the issues and the current challenges and uh, the problems that we are encountering in terms of science diplomacy. The first thing that we always start with questions regarding a topic in which it's very striking, such as, for example, how governments, they do support and engage in science diplomacy. Recently, I have read a lot about science diplomacy in the Middle East, and we have fortunately um, a lot of articles in which they are written recently about the um, science diplomacy in the Arab world in which at the beginning, when you enter science diplomacy, you think that there's nothing about the topic uh, specifically about developing regions, but it's not this way. When you read, you will discover that there's quite a lot. However, uh, when it comes to the role of government, we have to remember that we have a lot of issues. For example, the first thing that comes uh, to the role of government that the responsibility first, which is very important because of being in economics as well as in governance, I think funding and allocating necessary resources for the development of science and um, technology is very, very important. And I will, we will discuss if we have that in the Middle East or on um, specific cases <clears throat> in the region. Science diplomacy is the process by which states, in fact, represent themselves and their interests in the international and regional arenas. And in the Middle East, we see that some countries are well represented and some countries, they are not represented in terms of science and diplomacy, in which we need to focus more on, on the other countries. And I will discuss why we don't have those countries at the big picture of the Middle East. And then science diplomacy is crucial to address a lot of challenges that the planet is facing nowadays. For example, the current one is COVID-19, in which it has not only stopped with the uh, state relations, but we have even problems uh, such as trade problems, collaborations, uh, economic downturns because of COVID-19, uh, problems in climate, as well as uh, other problems like migration, international labor, all are caused, all are slowed down because of COVID-19. And then when we look at the Middle East, we see that um, science diplomacy in the Middle East is associated with the national interest and uh, objectives, which is contradictory to what, um, because of this direct state involvement in the topic, and then every state in the international relations, states normally uh, seek their national interests, which is um, a phenomenon in politics, and we have seen that as soon as the um, declaration of international relations. And the state has a fundamental role in budgeting, research, and development, and um, someone's mic is on, uh, please, um, Dr. Roala, so much noise comes from someone. 
Okay, thank you. And the state has a fundamental role in budgeting the research and development as well as policy changes accordingly. Because of, uh, we are in a different age now and we have globalization, we have interconnectedness around the world and policies should be upgraded and we need changes in policies such as, for example, Dr. Awaz Yasrina, she mentioned about internationalization and Dr. Rabnawas, he mentioned about um, the issue of um, researchers and joint collaborations in which we all need changes in policies in which we will have better collaborations and exchange of scientists and diplomats around the issue of science diplomacy. And then what are the uh, critical challenges in the region? We could say that the policy authority remains largely in the hand of state in which sometimes we see that the contribution of state in science and technology is um, in benefit of politics. And we see that in the Middle East because of the culture of politics, a lot of states, they control science and diplomacy as well as technology, which is in fact negatively affects the picture of science diplomacy and the development in terms of science. And the Middle East, in fact, faces a lot of challenges and the main and the crucial one could be the political fragility and the conflict in the region. And I will, I will give you examples of where we have. And we have other persisting challenges such as civil wars, tensions, economic downturn. When we say economic downturn is because natural resources, uh, because of oil and gas and uh, the nature of the resources that the region has in which uh, for example, oil price is affected by the international markets, by the uh, crisis around the world, in which those, in fact, economic phenomena affect us, our budgeting and affects our planning and policy making in terms of science diplomacy. We have um, issues in human capital and infrastructure. As I said, human capital, because uh, as we have war in, for example, Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, Yemen, and those wars are long-term wars, such as, for example, the Syrian uh, civil war that has turned to a country war, which has torn apart the country. Many educated people, many um, researchers, many academicians, they are leaving the countries in which it's in fact affecting the picture of science in the region. And we are losing great human resources, which is in fact the fundamental part of science diplomacy. In terms of uh, infrastructure, because of wars, challenges and economic sanctions and um, uh, intra and um, interstate um, crisis, uh, governments do not contribute in long-term infrastructure development in terms, for example, of research and development. Almost all plans are for five years or short-term plans because of the nature of politics. And we have elections every four years in the Middle East for most of the countries. And every political party wants to show something to the people. So based on short-term planning, we just give um, some investments in those um, planning policies, which is um, at the end, we will see that there's failure in, in the planning for our science and diplomacy. In the Middle East, regardless of few countries, in majority of the countries, we have economic policies that are not in favor of innovation and development. And we will see by the end of my slide where we have the small countries are doing better than the uh, big leading um, countries in the Middle East. And uh, that comes when we look at the development and expenditure for research and development in the region. This is where we have uh, investment for um, social um, initiatives regarding the Arab states in which the challenges are similar to science diplomacy that comes from, for example, starting from uh, funding con uh, constraints and then lack of personal uh, absence of participation of participants. And then that comes to knowledge gap, legal, aff legal affairs and lack of institutional uh, contribution until the end, which is competition, which is very important in terms of science and development. And when we say competition, we have to remember that sometimes competition helps other countries to boost their um, capacities in science and development. And this is another picture because when we talk about science diplomacy, we have to remember that sustainable development goals. Now we are in 2021 and we supposed to have a 15 years plan for uh, sustainable development goals and achieving those goals. And for the Middle East picture, we have a lot of challenges such as unemployment of youth, 
and the Middle East, different, it's different comparing to the other regions around the world because 15 to 20, 25% of the Middle Eastern population, they are young population, which means I mean 20 to 15% of those that are living in the region, they are among 20 to 25 years of age in which the unemployment of youth affects the future of science and diplomacy in the region, as well as peace and collaboration among the countries and among the nation states in the region. Globalization is leading very fast in which, because of a lot of challenges in the Middle East, we are not able to catch up with developments in science, technology and innovation, as well as telecommunication. That's why we have um, those problems that are affecting our population and above all poverty, which is in fact making many people as science they to leave um, their countries behind. And when we look at the um, science diplomacy in terms of shortages or in terms of what's missing in the Middle East, um, similar to all other countries around the world and regions, we have a lot of uh, good pointers and as well as shortages such as, for example, there are missing elements in national style of science diplomacy. When we um, look at the prospective countries and when we look at the diplomatic practices, as I said, for example, we have broken relations between Israel and many Arab countries in the region. We have tensions between Iran, Iraq, Syria, and a lot of um, changes that are happening between Yemen, Saudi Arabia. So a lot of political challenges are out there in which it's affecting science diplomacy and development in the region, regardless of being a very rich region in terms of resources. Diplomatic styles should be formed by considering the national and regional characteristics of science diplomacy, in which I think we need to uh, update, we need to um, see the national um, features and the national uh, needs for science diplomacy. And then we need to look at the big picture of the region to form a new science diplomacy initiative for the Middle East. And it is um, a regional phenomenon that national interest, as I said, it is uh, constrained. And as um, a state, in fact, it performs in, on behalf of the, the nation and every nation states in international relations, they're seeking their national interest uh, based on the theory because every nation wants to maximize its power. But in terms of sound diplomacy, if you want to maximize your power, then you need to use soft power instead of hard power. Another point is that we have mismatch of national diplomatic style and national scientific style, which is extremely important because um, national uh, diplomacy style as well as the national scientific style. I do see um, a big gap in this area because uh, a lot of states, they focus on diplomacy and um, the science part is forgotten. That's why I will give recommendation at the end about this topic. And science is a tool and a bargaining chip in which it's very necessary for the Middle East because instead of um, bargaining in, in terms of power and in terms of um, politics, we can use um, science and diplomacy uh, for the sake of, for example, building peace among the nations in the Middle East and focusing on conflict resolution and sustainability of peace for the people and for the regions. As well as we have um, one issue in which uh, we have a critical role, for example, sound diplomacy uh, has a critical role in addressing the complex uh, transnational issues uh, such as insecurity, in which insecurity in fact brings under development to the countries and to the nations. And for us, yet we are suffering from insecurity, for example, in the, in the Middle East, especially in Yemen, in Saudi, in Iraq, and in, in Syria. We see that, for, for example, sometimes you are out there in the city and there's um, rocket launches in which it's in fact risking people and risking the relations of countries among each other. Foreign ministries and multilateral um, uh, organizations and, and science-based institutions are unprepared and ill-equipped to deliver support to science diplomacy. We do see um, some support from some institutions such as, for example, academia. But I think as far as government has a great hand in science and diplomacy development, then we need support from all stakeholders together to uh, tackle the missing elements and the challenges in the Middle East. And then when we come to the further challenges for the Middle East, we have um, due to the existing challenges, 
scientific activities and regional cooperation in science is limited in the region. Uh, for example, I, as Dr. Yazdin has mentioned about internationalization, I do see that we have more um, sending students. For example, in Iraq, we have sending students to Iran and to Turkey to study, but we don't have that much collaboration between researchers as well as diplomats, as well as political parties and uh, civil society organizations. We need to focus on that point, which is very important for science in the region. Science and diplomats are siloed. That's, it has a negative inf influence on science diplomacy broadly. And there's a need to bridge the two communities and um, that could be through uh, trainings and opportunities, for example, such as what IIIA is and to us has provided, such as the current um, diplomacy initiative that we have started. We need, um, as well as with this, uh, we need training, this. we need to develop the skills regarding the topic. And I would tell you that um, through my experience, I have realized that science diplomacy and this topic for the region is extremely um, very new, as um, my friend before has mentioned as well regarding to Africa. So we need a um, national and international awareness about this, that we could start from workshops, seminars, as well as symposiums and other activities in which we need to open up um, and build um, knowledge-based experience regarding this point. And then um, the other uh, point is that we have, we have to have it in the context of Middle East. It could be the um, role of nation states. And for us in the international relations, most of the time is we see state as a sovereign component. And when we look yeah. at the collaborations and integration of states, sometimes a lot of um, um, a lot of diplomats they think that if you are more integrated, then you may lose power. However, uh, for realist thinking, uh, we think that hard power could be um, um, could be a problem, but we can use soft power for attraction and admiration of state. Another thing is that soft power always enriches peace and development for all countries similarly, and especially for the Middle East, as I said. For me, uh, from economics and from governance field, I do think that unless we reach to peace, we will not have prosperity and development in the Middle East, because this is the core of the region in which we need a sustainability of peace and security for all countries and all nations. The idea of balance of power is very important in international relations. Because um, in international relations, we think that um, for Wall Streetians, they think that if a country wants to maximize its power, then we uh, another country loses power. But in terms of science and diplomacy, if a country stands alone um, and doesn't share science, doesn't share knowledge, skills, experiences, then um, they will not develop because, for example, let's look at China. It's um, developing in terms of trade, opening to the world, and their policy was to go abroad for making um, or for opening other gates. So, in terms of uh, using power, we need to use soft power. We need to keep balance of power among nations and focus on enriching um, our knowledge together in terms of science and diplomacy, which is very important for international collaborations as well as for international affairs, regardless of being in the Middle East or in the other regions. And this is one picture in which when we say some countries are doing much better, this is our, a big picture for the world in terms of investment in science and um, in, in research and development. And we do see that few countries in the Middle East, such as Turkey, Israel and Egypt, and I think it could be Iran too, that they have, um, they are among the um, countries that they contribute well and they invest in research and development. The rest are other countries, mainly from Europe, in which we see that a great important com component of science development, uh, science diplomacy in the Middle East is forgotten and we need its contribution in this part because um, funders are extremely important for research and for development. And this is another um, global innovation index in which for the Middle Eastern countries, we see that the small states like um, Gulf uh, cooperation countries like UAE, Qatar, uh, Kuwait, Oman and Bahrain are doing much better, Israel as well, comparing to the rest of the countries in which they are in, broad, um, in um, blue spots, such as for example, you can see Qatar, because Qatar, Kuwait, Bahrain, UAE, they contribute as well as Saudi Arabia. 
and Oman, then Israel, they contribute well into science and development, especially in technology development. And as far as I remember, Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Kuwait, they have 13 years plan for developing science and technology, which is extremely important. And out of COVID-19, we have realized that that's, those countries, they were quicker in responding to COVID-19 and tackling and mitigating the challenges for that. Um, when we say that we don't have anything in the Middle East yet, we have something in the Middle East and we have a lot of initiatives that so far, uh, Sesame is the best one, in which the picture of Sesame is uh, different because uh, of, having comp of having countries such as Pakistan, Iran, Israel, Turkey, Palestine, Jordan, Egypt and Cyprus working together. And that tells us that science could be a, uh, could be a pathway could be an approach for all nation states to get together and contribute into changing uh, diplomatic efforts between countries and um, shifting uh, hard power challenges and competition to soft power and development together. An um, intra-academy partnership is another example in which uh, Egypt, Morocco, Sudan and Jordan are part of it. And um, we have other um, initiatives, we have other organizations as well in which we, I think we need to find them and we need to support them and we need to tackle those issues. And when we come to the end, and uh, this is my last, I think, slide, science diplomacy in the Middle East forward, what do we need to do? Importantly, for a successful implementation of science diplomacy, diplomacy there's a strong and um, coherent science community for the region. We need to build a scientific community that uh, for this issue, we need to join each other, such as citizen diplomacy. We need science diplomacy that um, brings us um, different actors to cooperate and collaborate among the um, two uh, communities, the scientific community and the diplomatic community. Creating room is very important for all actors, regardless of where they are, whom they are. For example, they could be from diplomatic um, relations, they could be researchers, they could be scientists, politicians, citizens, institutions, they could help us and we could help them to build this um, necessary component for the region. We need our governments to invest more in terms of in, in technology, innovation and science, because this is where we can produce, um, for example, in the Middle East, we don't have a lot of discovery in terms of research and that because especially um, the um, scientific parts, not the literary parts, in which they need a lot of um, issues such as laboratories and testers and so on. Long-term commitment is very important and very essential as well as planning. When we talk about planning and commitment, um, as I said before, we have short-term planning, short-term governmental commitment. We need to um, look at a roadmap in which we, um, such as uh, we need to have a 10-year plan, 15-year plan, and it could be five-year plan, but continuously focusing on upgrading it and updating it for better science diplomacy in the region. And those are the resources, if anybody would love to read them, because there are quite good ones, and I will share with the group as well. And thanks for your listening. Thank you, dear uh, Dr. Uh, for your very interesting lecture. And uh, I see some uh, question in the chat room uh, about where is Egypt in the curve? And I answered the question because uh, when uh, you uh, mentioned the system project, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I told them uh, you mentioned Egypt. Sure, but in the curve uh, is uh, a lot of uh, Arabic country, but I didn't see uh, uh, the state of Egypt in the curve. But the no, Egypt is, yes, I also didn't, I had this question as well, but in research and development, Egypt is out there in the picture. It's yes, among yes, the I third row countries, yes. But yes. the other one is not uh, the system, it is the Global I Innovation Index. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, if there is any question from the, spe uh, the uh, participant to the, our speakers, and uh, now we have an open discussion uh, session for uh, 15 minutes. And uh, 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 I will uh, tell you that I will publish the evaluation uh, Google form now in the chat room. So please uh, uh, check the Google form. It will uh, contain the MCQ for all lectures, four lectures today. 
uh, collecting uh, uh, please don't uh, forget to post you uh, put your full name and email and contact in what